This is section 6.1 about ratio and rates. First of all, a ratio is just the quotient of two quantities. If we're looking at the ratio of a number A to a number B, it's just their quotient. And the number that comes first in the statement, the A, goes on the top if we're writing this as a fraction. So some different ways of writing ratios are A to B. A to B, we also read this one that way with a, sem with a colon in between, and A over B where it's written as a fraction. We're going to do some examples of writing each of these ratios as fractions in simplest form. So if we start to tw with 20 to 30, if we want to write this in the form of a fraction, since the 20 came first here, it goes on the top, and the 30 goes on the bottom. Now we just have to write this in simplest form. So let's write each of these factored with the 10 factored out. And then that turns out that this would be 2 thirds in simplest form. For this one again, the 16 goes on the top since it came first here. Then if we want to reduce this to simplest form, both of these are divisible by 2. So we'd have 2 times 8 and 2 times 5. And then if we cancel the 2's out, we get 8 fifths. Now for ratios, we're going to be leaving these as improper fractions. Now finally, if we have 3 and a fourth hours to 6 hours, that gives us 3 and a fourth on top and 6 on the bottom. Now in order to write this in simplest form, we're going to have to rewrite our 3 and a fourth as an improper fraction. So remember to do that for the numerator. We'd multiply the 3 times the 4, which is 12, and add 1, which would give us 13. So we have 13 fourths on the top and 6 in the denominator. Now since this is a complex fraction, let's write our 6 as 6 over 1. Now we're just dividing two fractions. So we can rewrite this as a multiplication. We're going to take this bottom one and flip it over to make this a multiplication. Now if we look at our numerators and our denominators, our 13 is prime, so there's nothing that we could factor out of either of these. So we just end up with 13 24 and that's our fraction in simplest form. When we're talking about rates, rates are just special kinds of ratios, and these are used to compare different kinds of quantities. So if we have 5 miles in 55 minutes, that would be the same rate as 1 mile in 11 minutes. And notice all we did here was factor the 55 into 5 times 11, and then we canceled the 5's there, and we were left here with a 1. Let's take each of these rates and write them as fractions in simplest form. So for this one, we'll have 450 miles on the top, 8 hours on the bottom, and the one big difference between rates and ratios is that with rates you have to write the units in both of these places. Now we have this, we want to write this fraction in simplest form, so we need to factor out any common factors. So let's just look at the 450 over 8. Both of these are divisible by 2. So we could cancel out a 2 and get 225 over 4. So this would equal 225 miles over 4 hours. And again, we have to keep writing the units in there. Now if we have 246 miles on 54 gallons, that means we have the 246 miles on the top the 54 gallons on the bottom. And now we need to write this in simplest form. So let's think about what numbers might go into both 246 and 54. And first of all, they're both even. So we could factor out a 2. So we get 2 times 123 on the top, 2 times 27 on the bottom. So now we're down to 123 miles over 
27 gallons. Now is this in simplest form? Well, if you look at the 123, if you add up the digits here, you get 6. That means it's divisible by 3, and 27 is also divisible by 3. So we still have a little bit more work to do. Let's write the 123 as 3 times 41. and the 27 as 3 times 9. Now if we cancel out those 3's, 41 is a prime number, so this is in simplest form. Now for finding unit rates, all we do is divide the numerator of the rate by the denominator. For example, if we had 314 and 5 tenths miles on 17 gallons, to write this as a unit rate, we would divide the 314 and 5 tenths by the 17, which gives us 18.5. So the unit rate would be this number with the units included. So it would be 18.5 miles over 1 gallon. And with a unit rate, the number on the bottom is always going to be 1. So this is always one for a unit rate. Now let's do some examples. We want to write each of these rates as a unit rate. So for 450 miles in 8 hours, let's just write it as a rate to start with. Now to get it, this as a unit rate, we would actually want to divide the 450 by the 8. So 8 goes into 45 five times. Okay, so if we subtract, we get 50, then 8 goes into 50 six times. We subtract here, we get a 2. Now for these, usually the problem will tell us how many decimal places to go out to. Let's go out a couple here. So then 8 goes into 20 twice. We subtract here, we get a 4. And then 8 goes into 45 times. That gives us a remainder of 0. So now we could write this as 56 and 25 hundreds miles in one hour. And that's a unit rate. Now let's look at 380 people in 10 buses. That means we need to actually divide the 380 by 10. And let's use our rule for dividing by multiples of 10, or dividing by powers of 10. And if we have one zero here, then we're just going to move our decimal point over one place. So this would just equal 38. That means our unit rate is 38 people to one bus. One more thing we can do here is to find unit prices. When our unit rate is a money amount per item, then we call it a unit price. So unit price is just the price divided by the number of units of the item. For example, if a store charges $2.76 for a 12-ounce jar of pickles, and we want to know the unit price, we would divide the $2.76 by 12 to get a price per ounce. So here's our unit rate, because we have 23 cents on the top and one ounce on the bottom. We could also think of this as being 23 cents per ounce, or 23 hundredths of a dollar per ounce. Let's do some examples. So if we have 90 cents for 10 ounces, then we're actually dividing. Oops, let's not do it that way. We're actually dividing 90 cents by 10. And again, let's use our rule for dividing by powers of 10, we have one zero there. That means we're moving our decimal place over one 
one place. So this would equal actually nine cents. That means for our unit rate, we would have nine cents per one ounce, or we could say this as nine cents per ounce. Now let's look at $11.92 for nine pounds of apples. In this one, we're actually going to go ahead and do the division. So we're dividing 11 and 92 hundredths by 9. Then goes into 11 once. And if we subtract here, we get 92 and 2. 9 goes into 29 three times. 9 times 3 is 27. Then if we subtract, we have 22. 9 goes into 22 twice. We have 18. Then if we subtract that, we get 4. And 9 goes into 40 four times. Why did I stop there? That's because we want to round this to the nearest cent. So our decimal point is going to go right there. And that means we've gone one place, we've gone to the thousands place so that we can round to the nearest cent. So if we round this, we would get $1.32 because the 4 is less than 5. So we just drop that and leave the 2 the same. So our unit rate here, or our unit price, is $1.32 per 1 pound, or $1.32 per pound. Let's do one more. What if we have two different two different sizes of shampoo and we want to know which one is the better buy? We have one that's 70 cents for 11 ounces and another one that's 17 ounces for $1.39. So what we would do is find the unit price for each and then the one with the lower unit price would be the better buy. So first of all, if we have our 70 cents for 11 ounces, that means that we're going to divide the 70 cents by 11 to get our unit price. And let's go ahead and put our decimal point here. And again, we're going to round this to the nearest cent. So we're going to have to go out to three decimal places in order to do that. So if we have 11 here, we have to go all the way over here. 11 would go into 76 times. Now since we're at the 70, the 6 would go here, and that means we need to put a 0 here for a placeholder. So now we have 6 times 11 is 66. If we subtract here, we get 4. And then 11 goes into 43 times. And now we've gone out to our thousands place, and that's all the farther we needed to go. Let's write a 0 in here also. So if we're rounding this, to the nearest cent, it would actually round to six cents since this was a three. So this one unit price is six cents per ounce. Now let's look at the other one. In this one we had 17 ounces, which cost $1.39. So now we have to put this in the same form as we did the other one. So we had $1.39 for 17 ounces. That means we're dividing $1.39 by 17. And 17 is bigger than 13, so we have to go out to the next, the next place. And let's guess that that goes in there seven times. So seven times seven is 49. If we carry the four, we get 7 plus 4 is 11. Now if we subtract, we get 20. Whoops, well, I didn't make a very good guess there. Since, since 17 is smaller than 20, I actually should have guessed 8 here. So let's try this again. Okay, so let's try it with the 8 here. 
8 times 7 is 56, and 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13. Okay, this time we just get a 3, so that works out better. Now, again, we want to take this to the thousandths place so that we can round it. So let's add a 0 there. 17 goes into 30 only once. Now we've got it out to the thousandths place, and we can round it to the nearest cent. So if we round this one, it would be 8 cents per 1 ounce. So now, if we're comparing these two, this one was 6 cents per ounce, this one was 8 cents per ounce, which would mean this one would be cheaper. This one would be the better buy. So since this one is less per ounce, the unit price is less, then that means it's the better buy.